Hello, everyone. My name is Steve Lewis, and I am the Digital Media and Social Media Manager for the U.S. Trade and Development Agency. I want to welcome everyone today for joining us for our Google Hangout on India's Smart City Development. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at uh, www.twitter.com slash USTDA, and you can visit us on our website at www.usTDA.gov. We will be highlighting certain parts of this Google Hangout via Twitter with the hashtag, hashtag India Smart Cities. Um, so definitely follow us on Twitter to see some of the highlights. And also, if you are uh, at any point wanting to share this Google Hangout with anyone later on down the road, it's actually going to be hosted on YouTube and archived there. So we will ensure that a link is provided for later viewing the Google Hangout anytime besides now. So you know, whether you're tuned in right now or later on, you definitely won't be missing out on any of the, the great highlights from this excellent Google Hangout. And uh, as we know right now, there's over 100 of you that have... Uh, RSVP'd and participated, so I welcome you. So I just want to go ahead and get a quick start and give you just a brief overview of the U.S. Trade Development Agency, and then we'll go ahead and start with our panelists. So the U.S. Trade Development Agency helps companies create U.S. jobs through the export of U.S. goods and services for priority development projects in emerging economies. USCDA links U.S. businesses to export opportunities by funding project planning activities, pilot projects and reverse trade missions while creating sustainable infrastructure and economic growth in partner countries. So again, we are an independent uh, U.S. federal government agency focused on international development. Um, so today, what you're, if you're here and you're logged in, you know that you're joining us. Uh, basically, we are going to be talking about India's smart city development. Um, and we will be talking more about that and I'm about, actually about to introduce to you our regional director from USDA, Henry Steingast. Henry Steingast serves as the Regional Director for South and Southeast, Southeast Asia at USCDA, where he assists U.S. companies and overseas sponsors to implement USCDA-funded development projects and innovative public-private partnerships that lead to increased trade. His portfolio covers emerging markets in, in these two key sub-regions, initiatives of the Asia-Pacific Economic Corporation APEC Forum in, in ASEAN. He served as regional director for Asia, covering China and Southeast Asia from 2004 to 2007. And in these portfolios, Mr. Steingast has concentrated U.S. TDA investment in aviation sector modernization, transportation sector safety, security, clean energy development, e-government, and e-commerce initiatives. And so without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Mr. Steingast, our regional director here for the U.S. TDA Agency. Thank you, Steve. Good morning, everybody. And uh, it's certainly my pleasure to be here on this first Google Hangout for our agency. As Steve mentioned, we're an agency that supports infrastructure development in partner countries. And th today we're talking about smart cities, where obviously infrastructure is a key part of all aspects of urbanization and modernization of the infrastructure of cities. But I, I wanted to make a few key points uh, as we engage today's discussion. Our mandate is to work with U.S. companies such that they can become part of this infrastructure growth and modernization in partner countries. And the key part of our mandate, creating sustainable infrastructure for economic growth in our partner countries is the key part of our mandate that brings us to smart cities. Smart cities mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But as we look at the opportunities that urbanization, growth, infrastructure investment, and the role that companies take in that, we see all of these priorities converging in the urban environment of India, and our other partner countries uh, to, be, to be clear as well. India is a place where the modernization of the urban landscape is a top priority for the country. Prime Minister Modi has made smart city development a signature initiative of his new government. And this, this brings together a convergence of a number of strategies that have been part of India's growth strategy for the last 10 years or more. But certainly, as India increasingly urbanizes, there is no question that investments in infrastructure and investments in 
modernization that can take advantage of the digital revolution is paramount, it's key for India. Smart cities relate to making cities more efficient, more sustainable, more green. Essentially positioning them so that they can be competitive environments for investment, for people to live, for companies to build their, their ecosystems of supply chains and distribution. Cities are places where the efficient use of energy and the efficient use of water and the efficient movement of people for people to accomplish their jobs and to live their lives in a, in a sustainable way is critical to India's future and in all of the countries where we work. So today we wanted to talk about those opportunities in India and the, the uh, endeavors that we consider part of smart cities and how we can be supportive of U.S. industry involvement in this leading priority for India. We are, as, as Steve mentioned, uh, a U.S. government agency that brings U.S. business to the table by supporting their efforts to help plan major projects in India and elsewhere. We also support business meetings that allow partners to meet U.S. companies who can be providers of services and technology. And we do this through conferences and reverse trade missions. India is, for us, a key program country. India is our second largest program by country. And we're very engaged in the transportation sector, especially aviation, uh, and increasingly getting engaged in the rail sector. These are very important aspects of the infrastructure for smart cities. We have a very large portfolio in India related to what we call smart grid. This is modernization of the distribution grid, often in urban areas, and the transmission grid as well. And the key mandate here is to expand and modernize the grid system such that reliable power can be provided to business, to the commercial sector, to industry, and to people. And in many ways, what we refer to as smart grid has brought us directly into the context of smart city. Smart city depend on an efficient power grid. And it's become very apparent to us and to others in India that the grid system is in many ways a platform on which other digital improvements to the urban landscape can be accomplished. So these are some key points that we see. I wanted to quickly highlight some of the commitments that we have recently, recently made in India. During President Obama's visit to India at the end of January, we signed a memoranda of understanding with three states, specifically regarding smart city development in those states. And those states are Andhra Pradesh, the new state of Andhra Pradesh, the state of Rajasthan and the state of Uttar Pradesh, India's largest by population. And in each of these memoranda, we are committing to support the planning of smart city development in nominated cities selected in the visit that Prime Minister Modi made here in September 2014. Those cities are Vizag in Andhra Pradesh, Ajmer in Rajasthan, and Allahabad in Uttar Pradesh. But it's very clear from the discussions we've held with these states and their municipal officials that they see smart city development as not limited to those cities. And, and to be very frank, Andhra Pradesh sees smart city development as bringing together many of their leading infrastructure development priorities for the entire state including linking coastal ports by rail, linking aviation infrastructure to urban centers and to the ports, and looking at 
greater modernization of their infrastructure to be positioned for additional growth and investment as India's economy modernizes. So in each of these cases, we have taken on the challenge of supporting those states in their smart city development and will soon be bringing forward some support related to Andhra Pradesh. Another commitment that we have made is to bring those cities and their state officials and relevant federal officials from India's central government to the US in a reverse trade mission. And in this reverse trade mission, we will collaborate with our partners who are joining us here today uh, and many others listening in to introduce US companies to the leading opportunities in those states and with uh, the smart city development that they see. This is all part of our mission to help marry up the technology, the resources, the expertise that US companies bring to smart city development here in the US, but increasingly what they are taking on in overseas markets and India being a key one there. We don't have a great deal of time today, but we do have some very, uh, some very relevant experts to talk with us about efforts that are already underway in India on smart city development and working with the US business community. The last point I would make is that this is something that engages US TDA as a lead priority for our India engagements. But there are many US government agencies that are participating in this growing engagement of US companies with India's infrastructure with their smart city developments and with the greater uh, growth of the economy in India, which already, which already shows much investment by U.S. companies and U.S. companies that are working on smart city development. So if you would permit me with that quick uh, introduction of our role, I would like to bring on multi Perio from the U.S. India Business Council. U.S. India Business Council is a large membership organization of U.S. companies active in the Indian marketplace. And Multi serves as the policy and advocacy director for the U.S. IBC. And he manages the energy and environment portfolios for U.S. IBC. U.S. IBC has become very involved in smart city development and working with different partners in India to help engage their membership. Uh, with that, I will turn it to Multi, and thank you for your time so far. Multi? Thanks for the introduction, Henry, and uh, for all the great work you and your team do on developing smart cities in India and uh, all the help with uh, U.S. industry. Uh, for those of you not familiar with USIBC, we're the uh, largest business advocacy organization representing companies investing both in the U.S. and India, from the uh, IBMs and GEs to the Tata and Mahindra groups, uh, many of which are involved in successful smart city projects around the world, including in the U.S. and uh, India. Uh, USIBC uh, became very engaged in uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, 100 Smart Cities uh, initiative last year with a special focus on Vishakhapatnam, Allahabad, and Ajmer, uh, we were appointed to uh, three subcommittees created by the Ministry of Urban Development to advance smart city uh, development plans in the three cities. And through a, a series of smart city conclaves, roundtables, and trade missions, we facilitated dialogues with the central state and municipal governments, along with industry and civil society, uh, on promoting a holistic and collaborative approach to developing these smart cities. Uh, these platforms uh, gave us a great opportunity to, to showcase the benefits of successful smart city initiatives uh, around the world, showcase technology uh, from our member companies and services, and also uh, provided us with a great opportunity to learn more about the uh, priority sectors and projects in the three mentioned cities. Uh, just to, to briefly go over some of the uh, uh, priority sectors and uh, initiatives uh, that we uh, we're able to learn more about in, in Visac, for example, uh, emergency management systems was a top priority along with uh, integrated smart water systems and uh, waste management uh, 
projects, of course, uh, ICT infrastructure and uh, citywide networks and cloud computing networks, uh, high-speed broadband, fiber optic networks uh, were uh, on their list. Uh, smart grid technology, and smart buildings, along with the uh, instrumentation and controls uh, that uh, that go along with these pro projects, uh, meters, sensors, um, and then in Allahabad, uh, also a, a water and waste management systems uh, were a, a top priority and smart transportation, smart surveillance systems, of course ICT infrastructure, tourism event management uh, systems uh, were a, a big focus of our meetings and also smart systems for healthcare education and uh, e-governance was a, a key component and top priority in their, in their vision. For Ashmir, uh, technology-driven interventions that promote tourism was a, a top priority, along with opportunities to make water systems smarter and improve waste management systems. Uh, you know, having identified these priority investments, I think it's now uh, important for the city leaders to confront some of the issues of financing these projects. That's going to be a, a critical component. Uh, you know, in many of these projects, uh, uh, large capital upfront investments are going to be a challenge for the cities because of financial constraints. Uh, fortunately, new financial models are emerging along with new business models. Uh, and not all smart city projects, as you all know, uh, don't they don't require large amounts of uh, upfront capital. Um, but I think uh, to successfully implement some of these uh, new business models and, and PPP models, uh, uh, city leaders will have to consider strengthening uh, public se sector capacity, laying out the appropriate legal and sector frameworks, ensuring transparent competitive procurements, building strong monitoring systems, and also allowing for uh, flexibility uh, for adapting to unpredictable un uh, events. And uh, hopefully, as uh, city leadership and respective communities get a better understanding of what is possible, they'll embrace and accept uh, smart city concepts and different initiatives. Uh, now every city in India has a, a complex method of governance and coordination of, of governance. It will be an important factor to ensure uh, there's an integrated outcome and a collaborative, holistic approach. So we definitely believe that collaboration is key to successful smart city projects. We think you know these partnerships should include at a minimum in central, state, local governments, local utilities, local universities, uh, local business groups, developers, property owners, and all the relevant ad advocacy uh, organizations. And these these partnerships will help city officials and other uh, policymakers identify uh, the bottlenecks they face in urbanization, accelerates, and propose policy options to tackle these uh, these challenges. These challenges. Uh, you know, we believe that it takes a small army to build out you know, the complex uh, system that uh, incorporates a smart city, but uh, USIBC is committed to collaborating with all stakeholders whose uh, best possible solutions are tailored for, for each of these individual cities and uh, look forward to working with uh, USTDA and, and the government of India to, uh, to find tailored uh, solutions for each of these cities and work with our member companies and uh, uh, to, uh, to build a, a successful uh, uh, plan. Milty, thanks for that quick summary. It's clear um, USIBC's membership is very engaged on this point, and from the meetings and workshops that have taken place in India so far and upcoming, I think there's a, a great potential to expand the reach of the membership working with India's, uh, India's smart city developments. And I, I think we'll talk about that further as we get on here. But at this time, I would like actually to turn to one of the US companies that's already engaged uh, with smart city development in India, and uh, Lux Rao from Hewlett Packard, who is the country leader for HP's Future Cities, uh, Future cities program. And Lux leads a cross-functional team within, within HP, working with governments both at the center and state levels in India, uh, looking at the ecosystem of activities in smart city development. And he works 
similarly with an ecosystem of partners who bring a variety of skills, technology, and expertise to smart city development. Lux, I wonder if you might share with us some of your views about HP's involvement and what you see in NDS. Thanks, Henry. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, USTDA, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending upon which part of the globe you are at right now. Uh, at HP, you know, we've got a vision for future cities, uh, and I would like to uh, explain really what uh, our vision is all about. At the center of our vision is actually a citizen centricity. Uh, essentially, what we are saying here at HP is that you know uh, we keep the citizen at the center of all the programs, and a city can't can't be smart if uh, citizens are actually really not equipped or uh, not smart enough to actually utilize the resources and so on. So uh, our vision for future cities actually is one of a self-sustaining ecosystem that allows for efficient and effective utilization of resources. So we believe that you know a community and a citizen-centric approach that calls for an open governance something that empowers the citizens is actually important for our cities to be smart. And therefore, we are focusing upon you know, important areas. If you were to really understand the ethos in India about cities, you know, there is a, we've got a distinct problem of you know, uh, the urban poor syndrome. Uh, what I mean by that is that a large number of population within the cities are not really equipped uh, in terms of actually their social strata. And uh, the fundamentals of education and healthcare, and I would resonate with Nalti's views over here, uh, I was very happy to hear that Nalti when we actually talked about you know education and healthcare and so on because these are fundamentals and uh, our solutions are actually you know focused upon these areas of education, healthcare, governance, uh, and we're looking at you know transportation uh, and so on and so forth. So keeping the citizen at the center, we are yeah uh, keeping the citizen at the center. We're looking at you know areas of um, like I mentioned. Uh, as smart transportation, I'm repeating this because there's a little bit of a disturbance. So uh, education, healthcare, smart transportation, uh, things like e-governance, security, and so on are important tenets actually of our vision for smart cities in India. We call them future cities in India. So HP Future City vision is all about you know keeping the citizen at the center. So while we did that, we actually distilled into six uh, focus areas. So I'll actually run through these focus areas. In the interest of time, I may not be able to elaborate on each of these points. But nonetheless, I would like to actually give you a, an overview of uh, what, a, what each of these focus areas are. So fundamentally, a city should be livable. You know, how livable a city is for its citizen is an important parameter. It's something that will help citizens actually you know, to live, to make a livelihood, and so on. Is the city actually new economy ready? Uh, we've seen the success story that actually you know talks about how knowledge economy has powered India's uh, economy and so on. So we look at you know whether the new format retail, for instance, or actually aspects that are related to the knowledge uh, economy are being taken up by these cities. I know for sure. You know we talk about WISAC quite a bit. One of the key tenets of actually what we are discussing with WISAC is really how do we make innovation hubs and you know have citizens participate in uh, collaboration. That will help, uh, you know. That will help them actually, you know, uh, gain the fruits of an evolved economy or a new economy. Then superior government services. Uh, we are talking here about, you know, how do we actually, you know, make the entire government transparent to the citizen? Essentially, you know, the G to C or the C to G connect, the government to citizen connect or the citizen to government connect has to be seamless. So uh, India is a country which is actually, you know, as you know, it's um, uh, it's it's very widespread. Uh, the most pervasive technology today in India uh, is uh, is mobility. So we are looking at you know how we can actually leverage mobility to ensure that we reach out to the new corners of the country and put actually the power, as our prime minister says, the power of the government in the hands of the citizen. So here you are talking about actually how a simple ubiquitous smartphone would actually transform itself as a powerful tool for the citizen to actually understand what the government is doing and for the government to actually have a dialogue with the citizen and make them participate in the whole process of governance and so on. That leads to actually better governance and therefore a better quality of life. Moving forward, we talk about the agility and the resilience. How effective is the city in actually bouncing back should actually, you know, should something, uh, uh, should something happen? It could be actually a natural disaster, it could be actually a terrorist activity and so on. 
we believe that you know the ability of a city to bounce back and actually be resilient is also an important uh, aspect of you know how a city should be planned so when when i'm talking about all of these aspects okay when i uh, fall back onto the technology architecture our building blocks actually keep into cognizance all of these things and then we look at you know how we can build a city to have all of these standards that i actually talked about and finally i would like to talk about you know collaborative innovation how do we make it possible for the citizens to actually participate in the government and by bringing in ideas so we have a whole lot of citizens who have great ideas you know and this also addresses the problem of the educated unemployed people uh, graduates who are actually you know well qualified but they don't have a job so we're talking about you know things like an innovation hub and the like that will help citizens to come in with an idea and work out with a product so to say i'm actually you know saying it simplistically like a slogan but the fact is that if someone actually walks in with an idea they should be provided all of the aspects and support that is needed for trans transforming that idea it could be a mobility application it could be a web service it could be a full fledged application and so on so we want to actually nurture the talent that is there and provide them an ecosystem of support that will help them actually take it to market and so on this also will ensure that you know the government will actually help in the co creation of ip for these cities and that will actually you know help the city to gain its own dna as an innovative city as a tourism rich city or actually uh, uh, ed uh, education hub or a health hub and so on so these are some of the thoughts that we are actually working towards and you know i can uh, i'll actually unravel more of these you know as we proceed but in the interest of time i'll hand it back to you henry thank you so much for the opportunity lux thank you so much for joining us uh, there in India, and we have a number of Indian participants on the call uh, today, and one of those I'm going to introduce now, um, who unfortunately his camera is not working, so we will hear his voice. But with that, Top Pradod is the uh, director, the executive director in India, of what's known as the Smart Cities Council, lending further proof to the uh, developments taking place in India. And Pratap's background, actually, he's a chartered accountant and has specialized in financial research, helping set up corporate and economic research center uh, within India, going back to the 80s, and has pioneered various kinds of equity research in India, helping launch um, a successful equity journal. Uh, Pratap is now with India, with the U.S.-based Smart Cities Council, working in India. And Pratap, if you could share with us some of your views about smart city development that you see from the council's perspective. Uh, first of all, my apologies that uh, I'm not really I'm slightly invisible there on the screen, uh, but I'll. Uh, let me take, I think uh, the other panelists have already mentioned some aspects of smart cities in India. But I think, uh, let me begin by saying that India's move to smart cities is far more compelling than most other nations. And uh, obviously we've got terrific statistics to actually prove that. And uh, it makes absolute financial sense for India to be doing what it's doing. So why I would like to establish this is because it's not it's not a path undertaken as on the basis of some fad now i think it's 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 promise is so much of uh, inclusion that our prime minister is talking about we, that we managed to 70% of our people are living and they are being financed by the 30% people who live in around 200 towns and cities so we have 70% of the people living in 550000 towns and villages and the 200 towns and cities are actually funding the entire subsistence of these people. So with just an urban development investment of 0.70% of GDP, this, uh, the urbania, actually the urban world contributes 70% of our GDP. So obviously the financial, uh, financials are very compelling for us to be taking this route. And, uh, and the urban migration is going to see India, which is going to take its population from 340 million, as in it was in 2008, to 590 million in 2030. So we're going to add 
a few countries in this whole journey of these uh, you know 22 year 10, 12 years uh, from 340 million to 590 million and we have 53 cities having population of over 1 million which is likely to go, grow to 68 uh, with a density of 12,000 people per square kilometer this it just calls for smart city practices that need to manage the people in the kind of space that we have. We in India, very interestingly, the whole uh, the country is actually prepared to take on the smart city practices and I think that's very key because uh, you're not introducing something out of the ordinary. It is already that the people are looking for an efficient means of living. So we have multiple practices going on in various cities although they are all not in one single city to for, for that city to be called a smart city. So we have like Tamil Nadu has been able to bring down its road accidents and Tamil Nadu incidentally has the largest road accidents in, in India and yet they were able to bring it down by using smart uh, software practices in the traffic management system. Raj Court similarly in Gujarat has managed to bring down waste management. Ahmedabad again from Gujarat and Indore from Madhya Pradesh have made great headway in public transport systems while Navi Mumbai has been able to treat wastewater very smartly. So we have way, all smart practices but in, scatter, in a scattered way all across and each city again is planning a smart initiative in the budget that it is finally you know got on hand. And very interestingly, I would like to share one particular part which has made a big, big change in the way the country is going to operate and that is as the Prime Minister has introduced about the uh, means of devolution from the center to the state. The country is now literally going to be sharing 62% of the central tax revenues with the state. And in the state, the, this has been the recommendation of the 14th Finance Commission. The uh, there were earlier around nine criteria by which the urban local bodies could actually utilize these funds and they had to qualify. But now it has been left to the state to decide which project of the urban local bodies would be given a basic grant, uh, sorry basic grants are given to all. There is a performance link grant as well. So this actually this whole uh, network which is being created it is actually facilitating the devolution of power from the center to the state which is which is very very important if we have to execute something like smart cities the more the center would have to would have controlled the lesser the action we would see on the ground or maybe it would have been even more later i think that singly in this budget which has uh, come out and declared this uh, cooperative and competitive federalism it has been able to change this whole dynamics of funding. Also, I think uh, th there have been multiple, um, you know, infrastructure initiatives that have been taken, which nearly, I think we calculated it was nearly to the tune of 40 billion. But in total sum of 40 billion is going to be invested across various initiatives, which uh, consist of roads, railways, and a whole lot of urban development initiatives. So I see that even though we may the budget might have not mentioned smart cities specifically, which is probably because the government was not fully prepared with all its guidelines and I'm told the guidelines are likely to now come by next month and I think uh, the, the pressure, the pressure of the deadline has been working on the government and they've probably been working at it. So I think by next month is what today's news says that they are likely to come out with guidelines which will define which cities will be considered smart and uh, I think there is another issue there uh, which are they are taking the two, uh, two pillars of determining the smart cities. One is the economic rationale which is absolutely necessary for discovering uh, a city and it has, if it has to sustain. Uh, they are uh, sort of uh, selecting cities based on the fact that there is an economic rationale. And the other is that there is brownfield cities again will be would qualify much easier because there would be 
smart areas that could be created within cities that are uh, you know prepared for this kind of a initiative so i think a whole lot of work has really started off this year and i think we will see a whole lot of action going forward this year as smart cities council i think that bodes very well for the initiatives that we want to take forward um, so that's it from me now and we can talk again in question and answers thank you pratap i think i'll i'll get started here um, our question and answer chat box is apparently not functional uh, with the google hangout today so i'll i'll ask us some questions and invite uh, invite my guests to uh, pose questions among uh, ourselves as well for our listening audience i i did want to note that we have over 100 people who have signed into the the google hangout today and those include people not only here in the US across all our time zones but in India's single time zone i know we're also joined by uh, some colleagues in the US government um, our department of commerce has been a very important partner related to new infrastructure priorities in india uh, helping launch an infrastructure collaboration platform and work very closely with us on smart city developments in India and elsewhere. But gentlemen, uh, you all have provided some very useful high-level concepts and uh, understanding about how you see the involvement of your organizations and other, other entities in smart city development in India. Uh, Pratap, your statistics with India um, moving toward almost 600 million urban population from the current 350 or so in less than 15 years is a very, a very stunning figure. That alone shows some of the, the uh, requirements that India will face and, and by necessity will be looking to partners from, from many places to help with that urban growth. Um, Lux, if I turn to you first, you made a very key point about the urban poor and how important their engagement in, in the modernization and smart city development is. And I would point that this is something we have seen already through some of the more successful smart grid programs in India, including right in the capital, in North Delhi, um, where one of the electric distribution utilities has found that their programs to reduce losses provide more reliable power and to bring more people onto the grid have been boosted by their direct engagement in the poor uh, areas of the North Delhi metropolitan area. This they have pointed out has not only been an important part of their ability to improve revenue and improve the efficiency of their operations across the utility, but has been a very important engagement strategy for them where they have become involved in education and health programs and, and women's empowerment. It's, it gets to your point about the very important role that the urban poor plays in smart city development and you made related points about resilience I wanted to bring that back to your company's involvement and how you work with partners and ask about what are some of the lead applications that you see you're able to deploy these are technologies these are services but if you could speak about some of the applications you see most relevant to India's smart city development yeah thanks Henry um, very valid and uh, absolutely relevant and you know in the scheme of things for India. Uh, you mentioned about the discoms and you know how technology played a key role in reducing losses and so on. It's not really how much is produced but how much of losses are actually you know curtailed is important and you know then probably everybody is actually self-sufficient so to say. Uh, in the areas of uh, education and healthcare, we've actually focused and you know tried to bring about solutions which are technology led. And I would like to illustrate uh, a very simple solution called the e-healthcare solution. Um, you know, this e-healthcare solution is essentially you know all of the technology aspects you know stitched together. So you got a cloud, 
you've actually got medical devices that talk to the application directly because one of the fundamental problems is availability of resources you know good qualified doctors who actually you know will go out and you know uh, uh, take care of patients and service patients and so on so it, we've been actually talking about telemedicine for a very long time but it had its set of challenges uh, simply because you know it was not all joined up so to say they were not integrated so what we did was actually you know picked up a shipping container and then outfitted it actually with devices and we worked with other US companies you know we actually worked with the likes of Microsoft and 3M and so on and put together actually an enchilada set of solutions that would actually you know connect with the people who have a need so when we put this entire solution together out there uh, we saw that the number of people who actually turned up you know was you know a large number and i'll explain to you the reasons why the first thing is that you know uh, if you really look at you know we've got the best of healthcare if you really look at uh, india is actually a, a health tourism destination uh, you know you hear about it all the time but then if you really look at you know how much of that percolates down to the urban poor people probably they actually you know uh, have uh, very uh, abysmal facilities if you will on uh, getting actually you know healthcare and this is a problem that's been actually you know uh, there for a very long time the government has rolled out the primary health care program. The idea of a primary health care program is for actually the citizens to go and, you know, take benefit of the services that a health care provider would actually provide, in this case the government, along with actually, you know, a set of uh, government um, hospitals and so on. So uh, when we did the technology aspect, you know, when we actually brought in technology, we had this, uh, you know, like I said, we picked up medical devices that talk to an open EMR directly. So we are actually, uh, you know, we are high on open source technology simply because the scalability is actually an important aspect. Uh, so when these devices talk to the open EMR, then actually there's a doctor who is sitting actually, you know, hundreds or, uh, you know, thousands of miles away. Uh, he or she is able to actually, you know, look at real time what exactly is the condition of the patient who is probably being actually looked at by a paramedic or actually a junior doctor and then is able to actually, you know, suggest uh, a solution. And then we also did stuff that we are actually good at doing, which is digitization of records and so on. So I would dare say that, you know, one of these health centers, there are the kind of facilities that you get in terms of the EHR, the electronic health record, probably would actually, you know, uh, would be, you know, would be far superior to what, you know, a regular hospital actually today provides. All of this was possible actually, you know, in rapid time. This is a rapidly scalable model, a model and then it can be rapidly de deployed as well. And we also noticed other aspects of, you know, some benefits that came out of the whole thing. Uh, this was done in collaboration with actually, you know, uh, the Center of Scientific and Industrial Research in India. So we work, we work together along with them. And then we see that, you know, a large number of people are utilizing it. More importantly, women and child care in India is an important aspect. And when we see the metrics, we see that, you know, more than 50% of the people, the beneficiaries of this uh, EHC solution are actually women and children. So we've seen that it has actually started touching citizens' lives at a fraction of, you know, what cost it will or the time it will actually take out to, you know, roll out a new brick and mortar kind of a setup. So this quasi-permanent structure, which has actually got integrated all the pieces in, you know, devices, the EMR, the health cloud, and the dashboard is, is in effect actually how technology can play a key role in enhancing the health of uh, citizens in the country. It addresses the urban poor problem in a very big way. Uh, I don't know if I have the time to talk about education. We got something similar for education as well. Well, I think I think perhaps thanks, Lux. No, that's really useful to, to hear. I think we'll take a number of questions. I wanted to quickly alert participants that we do have ways that you can ask questions. One is to tweet them to the hashtag India Smart Cities. Uh, that's pound symbol India Smart Cities and. Our uh, moderator, uh, Steve, will get the question to me that you could pose to panelists. Also, you could ask questions by typing them in the comment box on the Google Hangout event invite screen. And we will also navigate the question to one of the panelists in the same way. So um, Nolte, very quickly, uh, from USIBC's involvement in smart city meetings in India, clearly one of the issues is the financing. Where will the resources come from for urban infrastructure and the diverse programs that we think of as part of smart city development in India? Could you touch on briefly some of the lead possibilities that we see? We just heard mention of the New India budget and there not being such a clear 
line for smart city development, certainly there is new funding for infrastructure. What are some of the key sources? Nolte, I believe you might be muted. So if you could unmute. There you are. Great. Great. Um, one area that we're uh, looking at is uh, as the cities develop their their master plans and identify the specific projects, I think it'll be critical for the cities to, uh, to once they have identified different projects, whether it's uh, you know wastewater systems, uh, uh, infrastructure, ICT projects. Uh, I think for the uh, the cities to analyze which uh, mo business models work best, whether it would be uh, you know, PPPs, building transfers, uh, and then analyze the uh, the different financial me mechanisms based on needs of the city, the type of business models that will be developed to uh, develop these projects. And there's a number of uh, innovative uh, financing mechanisms that are being used in other countries, from green bonds to uh, to other uh, finance financing mechanisms. And I think it's really going to depend on uh, you know project specific due diligence, feasibility studies, and um, and there's a, a wide variety of resources from our membership, from some of the leading financial service companies uh, and international banking institutes that we deal with. So we're working with our membership in those uh, institutions to provide solutions to the different city governments, state governments, and also uh, central governments. We've developed a, a number of uh, policy papers on uh, on smart cities, including financial models, and uh, we look forward to uh, continuing the dialogue with the, uh, the governments as these smart city master plans are developed. Right. No, thank you. It's uh, clearly a big challenge, and there will have to be a lot of sources. I, I wonder if I might turn to Pratap um, and ask about the engagement that you see. Your membership has developed diverse programs working here in the U.S. with cities and regional groups on smart city development, smart infrastructure. How many would you say are beginning to turn their attention or already applying similar practices with their investments in India. If you could provide some very brief commentary. Yeah. Uh, as the Smart Cities Council's mission is to show cities how to become livable, workable, and sustainable. So we have a consortium that includes 100 plus members and advisor organizations operating in 140 plus countries. 1.4 million plus people and 2.5 trillion dollars plus in annual revenues. What we use actually is a smart cities readiness framework which captures the relationship between a city's responsibilities and its enablers. And uh, we have developed a smart cities readiness guide which, which in its current form uh, can be downloaded from our website smartcitiescouncil.com this readiness guide is intended for mayors, city managers, city planners, and their staff. It helps cities help themselves by providing objective vendor neutral information to make uh, choices about the technologies that they need to transform the city. And it is, this is based on over 5,000 smart cities case studies. And it, was, it has been developed in conjunction with leading ICT and industrial solution providers. So our goal first goal in India will be to develop such a readiness guide for India because it has to be custom made uh, for India. India is a different country with multiple differentials and obviously this is going to be the first step that we are going to take and it will show Indian cities how to implement smart technologies within the context of Indian needs, financial structure and the procurement processes. So currently our Lead partners are in the process of providing us information for the readiness guide for India. Our projected publication date is September of this year, so not too far away. Thank you. Thanks, Pratap. There, there's a lot of efforts beginning to mobilize, and we and all the participants in this panel will be part of a mission that I mentioned that we will bring to the U.S. 
there, there are lots of expertise uh, centers in the U.S. One of those is with our National Institute of Standards and Technology, a part of the Department of Commerce, with their Global Cities Challenge. Uh, certainly the membership of the Smart Cities Council that Pratap represents in India, you know, a very large um, group in here in the U.S. You touch on a very important aspect for many smart city developments, and that's the role of integrated planning. And how do you see any of the panelists, uh, and I might turn to you first, Lux, um, the role of integrated planning and in working with a range of partners as you engage specific smart city developments in India? Absolutely. Perfect question. I think, Henry, you know, not, uh, I think one, uh, one entity would not really have all the answers to the smart city requirements. And I think it's important for us to actually, you know, kind of create and nurture an ecosystem that will actually address all the problems. And it's so important to actually have an integrated planning approach rather than actually, you know, learn it uh, along the way. So uh, what we're looking at doing is actually essentially, you know, and I'll take a page of, you know, what Pratap actually mentioned just now. So the readiness framework is actually something similar to what we also do. And, you know, uh, Pratap, I would, I, I'd like to talk to you actually, you know, post this. Uh, just to kind of uh, share notes and so on. So the readiness framework looks at actually what is the current state uh, of a city and, uh, you know, what really is important for that city. You know, every city is, uh, is different, you know, and I think, you know, each city, and one of the panelists also mentioned that, you know, each of these cities are different. And I think the uh, readiness framework will actually tell us, you know, what are the areas that need actually make a drizzle and what are the areas that, you know, could actually come in uh, for a phased approach. And once we know that, you know, a to-be state and a desired state is actually drawn up uh, along with actually the, 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 the leaders from the government, we then start putting together the solution framework, you know, essentially the technology, the ICT piece, which will actually go into helping, you know, create this system. And then you look at, you know, what are the partners that you will work with. And there's a tremendous amount of opportunity I've seen, uh, you know, for the U.S. company to actually participate in this program. So we're looking at actually, you know, we ourselves are looking at actually a whole lot of uh, uh, partnerships and synergies with actually other U.S. companies. And I mentioned earlier that, you know, we work with 3M, we work, we work with Microsoft and so on for some of the applications and some of the infrastructure requirements. So important, integrated planning is a must. And I think actually an ecosystem needs to be created, nurtured, because this is the start of a journey. And I think the ACT framework deployment will actually, you know, just be the start of a journey, which will probably, you know, last for 20, 25 years. Thank you, Lux. No, that's very, very important. Uh, we have a question. We have a question from someone participating on the types of events that we or other members of the panel uh, have sponsored or will sponsor to give U.S. companies an opportunity to get involved with India's smart city development. And, <coughs> excuse me, I'd first like to flag the plan to bring a mission to the U.S. that we will sponsor and we will work closely together with, with um, uh, panelists here and their organizations. But anyone else from the, the panel would you like to discuss events upcoming or very recent? to help U.S. companies become more involved? Sure. I know we'll be uh, participating in and organize uh, a number of events uh, in uh, Vizag, uh, Ajmer, and uh, we continue to host visiting delegations uh, from the three cities. Last week we had a delegation from Vizag uh, in the U.S., and we set up a roundtable and meetings uh, out in California to uh, showcase uh, some of our company's technologies and best practices in developing smart cities. So uh, I'd be happy to share uh, the exact dates uh, with everyone in, uh, in, a, in the near future. We plan that in uh, probably uh, April. I believe, I believe too, there is plans for a workshop taking place um, in Vizag uh, this is one in April that you had mentioned. Eric Moulton. Now, Pratap, are there, are there specific events that you see upcoming that Smart Cities Council is undertaking in India or back in the U.S. related? 
Um, yes, Henry, actually we finished one recently in February. On the 17th of February we had one in Delhi. Uh, and uh, of course we are going to be planning some more uh, private meetings uh, as we go forward once uh, with our lead partners. That's the plan where we can actually, since everything here in India has to be custom made, I think uh, we, we are look, looking at following that path. On the other hand, I think, uh, uh, you know, working with uh, an organization like USIBC and, you know, being able to send a delegation from here or have uh, people with the knowledge and authority to actually convey the right, um, you know, message to people in the U.S., to companies in the U.S. is something that we could work with USIBC, uh, you know, going forward. So, yeah, absolutely. We are looking at organizing this not only in the, we have identified actually 20 promising cities where we intend to, and we had uh, around 15 municipal commissioners at our event in, uh, in February in Delhi, and we intend to take it forward with each one of these municipal commissioners because they have very, very specific requirements of how they want to develop their own cities. Thank you. Thanks, Pratap. I have a question that was tweeted to us on Twitter. It says, a lot is talked about GIS technology in the context of smart cities. How and where does the panel see this happening, the development of geographic information systems as part of smart cities? Maybe I'll turn to you, Lux. Yeah. Uh, GIS is an important uh, important um, layer uh, if you have to really bring in ICT tools uh, for smart cities. Uh, to start with, I think you know a smart transportation system is actually built on a GIS framework. Uh, same is the case with you know any security or a surveillance kind of a solution. A city dashboard will actually need to you know be tightly integrated with the GIS for location awareness and so on. So I would say that GIS is actually becoming the ubiquitous layer. That will actually, you know, be a, a foundation for every ICT solution in smart cities. You know, whether it's a smart grid or smart transportation or the city dashboard or a city portal, this uh, the the GIS is an integral element. You know, we we're already actually doing a lot of work in this area in terms of integrating actually the GIS part onto some of the applications that are built over the GIS to give it a multi-layered, uh, you know, uh, insight. Essentially, we know there is an incident, and we know exactly where an incident is, to give you an example. It, it's a very important point you make, and I would point out that this is an aspect of the work that we're currently doing in India, specifically in the aviation sector. And I think, as, as many of you and our participants today know, the, the real estate occupied by airports, and airport development is a very large priority in India, to increase their connectivity, both domestically and internationally. But that real estate depends very much on knowing specifically what exists in, in the area. And GIS applications for the airport domain are part of our current program working through the uh, Aviation Cooperation Program that we sponsor. But increasingly, we see with our partners in India in aviation, the linkages that aviation and the airport domain has to urban development are becoming much more, much more visible, apparent, and critical in order to, to make those developments pay off. Uh, and it is one of those technology applications, as you point out, Lux, that's very important to smart city development. Um, do any of our panelists want to ask a question among the panel here? before we start to wrap. I have a question for Nalti. Uh, Nalti, uh, would it be possible for you to share some experiences in terms of the financial model, uh, models that you've actually worked on, which have, which have actually you know, been successful uh, in, in uh, the rest of the field? Um, you know, is there a possibility for us to actually you know, do a knowledge sharing exercise so that we learn from the whole experience? Definitely. We'd love to do that uh, uh, with, with HP and a number of our member companies. I think it would be a great uh, Opportunity to uh, possibly have a uh, host a workshop and and discuss uh, about possible models for different sectors, especially in the three identified uh, cities of uh, Vizag, uh, uh, Ashman, Allahabad. I think it'll be a great opportunity also to, to work with uh, 
uh, for top and the uh, smart city uh, council as well. If I, I might just put in a plug here for some upcoming efforts. Um, here in our agency, we just brought forward the first program related to smart city telecommunication and uh, communications platform. It's not in India, although we expect soon to be um, hitting the board for India as well. This has become a very important area for our agency because it's an important area of development for US companies in the markets where they're involved overseas. And so this one program that was brought forward to our board uh, relates to a specific platform designed to integrate the applications that make up the parts of a, a smart city, uh, transportation system, water, and energy. Uh, and I think as many of you have pointed out, the communications um, requirements are very important to have smart cities function, but also very much a part of the resilience and emergency communications aspect. And that's something that we're seeing increasing interest from companies approaching us about their, their initiatives in emerging markets. So all of these areas are, are ones that we, working with our partners like those here today, we expect to bring forward in smart city efforts. Uh, this Google Hangout is going to be available. Uh, I believe Steve will come on and help us close up and we can outline how this uh, will be available to participants. And uh, we look forward to bringing forward Smart City India activities. And as we do that, we will certainly put them out in our media uh, through press and through other media outreaches that we do. Uh, I want to thank all three of you, Eps, Pratap, and Multi, for joining us. I want to especially thank all the participants who signed in uh, to this, our first Google Hangout. Uh, we know there are quite a few in India. It's now 9 p.m., just after 9 p.m., India Standard Time. And we look forward to our next media event with India Smart City. Eve, would you like to please wrap us up? Thanks, Henry. I, I hopefully get a chance to mute the camera so you guys just saw me step over the chair there. But um, again, thanks to everyone for joining today. Um, again, thanks to everyone who signed in and, and to our panelists as well. This has been a great first Google Hangout for USTDA. So, you know, we'll definitely be hosting more in the future, so please stay tuned. Um, a couple things you can do to find out about future events is to follow us on Twitter at uh, twitter.com slash USTDA. Um, you can also subscribe to our event updates and alerts by visiting our website at www.ustda.gov. And then when you get there, look for the button that says subscribe for updates um, and just provide your email address and your first and last name and we will be sending you event updates just like this one. We'll send trade leads and anything else that might help you in getting involved with uh, these excellent and very exciting development opportunities, especially in India smart cities. So uh, please uh, continue to follow us. Um, if, again, if you are interested in seeing this entire video archived, it's going to be on our YouTube channel, and that's going to be www.youtube.com slash USTDA video. Um, so again, thanks to everyone who joined, and, and we'll see you next time here on the, uh, the Google Hangout with USTDA. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. 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 Signing off.